another spirit interview, obviously. This time uh, we are talking with Malachi. Um, now, I know pretty much nothing about Malachi, except the fact that he told me that he wants to be a manifester. What does that mean? Well, to a necromantic witch, it means that you empower him, he goes out and he does things for you. That's what a manifesting spirit will do. Um, if you need quick cash, you do the spell, you empower him, he'll go out and facilitate the way for you to get that cash. Um, if uh, what's another situation? Oh, if you are trying to contact somebody, say, especially because it's that time of year, it's around Christmas time, you are out of touch with somebody and you don't quite know how to find them anymore, and you say to him, you know what? I really want to find this person. I really want to get back in touch with this person. He will manage to open up pathways that boom you you reconnect with this person he's a manifester in all types of things you just have to empower him give him enough power to run out and do this stuff so for a necromantic witch um he is really a boon to have because he's a jack of all trades but but because he doesn't specialize in one certain type of thing like for for instance female jinns they control other spirits but they can't manifest your wishes whereas male jinns can help manifest your wishes but they cannot control other spirits so because malachi is a jack of all trades um it means that his power is spread a little thin so you are going to have to work in conjunction with him to get something done as opposed to just let him go out on his own. You have to be actively involved. So, um, Malachi has chosen, you've seen this in the, um, in the beginning, um, this cute little boy doll. Um, looks like it's, he's in the turn of the century garb here. Um, it's in really good shape. The shoes are in excellent shape, considering. Uh, no cracks, no breaks. The eyelashes are still glued on. You know, sometimes with older dolls, they come off. But yeah, everything is, is perfect on this doll. He's a little dusty. He's been sitting around here a little dusty. But um, you, could just, you could just take one of those dust rollers and get it off, because this is velveteen. So you could just, like, get one of those dust rollers. I mean, the lint rollers are just take care of him he's fine all right so let's get to know about Malachi himself now Malachi is an Irish name are you were you born in Ireland you were born in Ireland he was born in Ireland in the 1800s what was the exact date 1828 he was born in Ireland It begins with an L. Oh, the town doesn't begin with an L. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. So it was on the land owned by this lord. Okay. Were you what we would call crofters? You were crofters? Okay. Sheep? So your family was in charge of like flocks of sheep? So you, okay, the sheep. He was showing me as a boy, he would help his farm. He, he was showing me that he was like shearing down sheep and So your family took care of sheep on the, the land, okay. Now, and I'm Irish, I should know better. Um, 
were you still over there during the famine? You were. Did you emigrate during the famine? You did emigrate. He ended up in Canada, okay? Windsor? He's, I, I, I'm hearing Windsor, Ontario. Is that where you settled? Okay. He had, he was in a cabin. Now, was it just you that came over? You came over yourself, okay? When did you emigrate? Because I, I have a feeling that you're saying 48. No. Are you saying 1852? Is that when you left Ireland in 1852? Okay. Was your family still over there? All your family? He said Ma was gone. Dad died earlier that year. How many brothers and sisters, because let's face it, we're Irish, okay? How many brothers and sisters did you have? He had eight. Were you one of eight? So there were eight others besides you. Okay. How many of them reached adulthood? Is that besides you? Okay, so half half the children died before they made it to adulthood. And that wasn't because of the famine. That was just because of illnesses. He said one had typhoid. He thinks it was typhoid. Another one had tuberculosis. Oh, your mother had tuberculosis too? He said Ma and Katie had tuberculosis. Did they die at the same time? Yeah. He said Katie was how old? Katie was eight. But nobody else in the family got tuberculosis? Oh, they did. Your brother did, but he lived to adulthood. So he had it. Oh, because... He was 15 at the time that he caught it, but he lived, he lived till he was 23. Now was, he said his brother's name was Thomas. Now did Thomas die before you left? He did, okay. So who was the oldest in the family? You were, you were the oldest, okay. He said he emigrated because he got tired of all the crap and nonsense. That's literally how he put it. I got tired of the crap and nonsense. And yes, he does have the Irish accent. He is saying, when I said ma and da, that is Irish. That is what they call their parent, ma and da. And he is very clear. In fact, that, al that almost sounded like him. He's very clear. Um, I mean, I have no trouble understanding his brogue, but he has a brogue. He never lost his brogue. Um, now Malachi, do you, do you, now do you pronounce it Malachi? Or do you pronounce it Malachi? Malachi. You, pr you prefer Malachi. Okay. Now Malachi, he is... When he was young, he was really skinny. Like when he was in his early 20s, he was really skinny. And he had very pronounced features, like a very, like the, the Roman nose very straight to a point and then it came in 
and he had freckles. He's got like they're very light. They're very light brown. They're almost like tiger eye brown eyes. Like when the light is in them, they are like very, very, it literally is like the tiger eye. When you, you take a tiger eye and the light hits that and turns it that golden brown, that's the color of his eyes. It's golden brown. And he has, he almost has like tiger eye hair like that because he's got brown hair, but it has like red, reddish and like blondish highlights in it. And he gets the blonde highlights because of the time spent in the sun because he was out in the sun a lot. Um, but he, but it's, it's more like a dark brown auburn type of hair color that he has. But this, the, the little bit of blonde, like, highlighting at the very top of his hair is because of the sun. He was out in the sun. Um, as he got older, he got more muscular up here, but it, it, it was, you know, like the triangle shape. He, he didn't get big, you know, like wrestler big. But he he got more muscular here um, as he performed more menial labor, um, and he did he did put on weight all over, but he never got big big. But he he was he was pretty solid, and he was only about oh I don't know like maybe five nine five ten. I mean that's kind of big. But, you know, it's it's not, I mean, hey, in the 1700s, George Washington was six feet tall. So, I mean, you know, it was about, it's about average size. Um, he said I was a strapping lad. It's exactly the way he put it. I was a strapping lad. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you came over in 1852. He was in Edmonton for a while. He said when he got sick of that, he went to Ontario. I kind of get the feeling that he worked at a brewery in Ontario. I don't know if they had... I'm sure they must have. I don't know if it was on a, in Anta Ontario, but he he worked. The um, I see him like loading barrels onto the wagon because back in those days, obviously they didn't have cars. It, it, if you ever saw that like Three Stooges short with the beer. On the wagon, I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm seeing, like, the, the wagon. And he was loading the beer barrels onto the wagon. And he, that was what he, he was, he was a dock worker there, uh, loading all the barrels up for the deliveries during the day. He met a woman, her name was Sally. He called her Sal. Now was she Irish herself? She was an English girl. And there were no problems? I didn't think so. <laughs> the Irish and the English, the orange and the green. Um, wow, yeah, that must have caused uh, a bit of an uproar. He said there was no end to the pissing and the moaning. Who from? He said his friends. What about her family? Did she have family? No, she didn't have family. She, he said she was a maid. She was orphaned. But his friends were pissing and moaning about her being an English girl. He said I told them to stuff themselves. He said and I married myself. Did you guys have kids? Four boys. All boys. Now, 
You know what I'm about to ask. He said, we lost the second one. He was one years old. I think it was the croup. The other ones made it though. Okay. So did you live out the rest of your life in Canada? You did? Okay. And what about Sal? He doesn't want to talk about Sal. Did Sal go before you? He said, I never loved anyone again. He said, there was only myself. Did she get sick? She did get sick. He said she wasted away. He really won't talk about it, but he said she wasted away. And that's all he's going to say about it. He, he, he still hurts over it. I'm not going to push him. I'm not going to push him over it. Um, okay. So why, why are you still here? You did, did Sal cross over? So Sal crossed. Okay. So why, why are you still here? He said, my kin needed me. Your kin doesn't need you anymore. He said maybe, but they don't feel like my kin anymore. You know, because once his son, sons were gone, and then they had their kids, and then it, it felt detached after that. He felt detached from his family, and so he, he said he scooted around, picking up a thing or two. He says he loves the witches. I mean, look, look at this pendulum going crazy. He says he loves witches. <laughs> he says crazy the whole lot of you. <laughs> he says he loves crazy gals. So, why do you want to be a manifester, a facilitator? First he said, why not? And then he says, well, I'm just hanging around here doing nothing. Why not make, why not do something useful with myself? He says he loves to make Lassie smile. So to, to make you happy, he'll to bring a smile to your face, he wants to be a manifested. I don't get the fact, I don't get that he's, I mean, he's kind of making himself off, kind of like the ladies man, but he wasn't. He was a one woman man, and he was, but that's the thing about him. He is loyal. He is devoted. If he if he comes to you and and you know he's he is with you a hundred percent. You know, if you ask him for something, he's gonna try to move heaven and earth to give it to you. Because he's just he's devoted, he's loyal. So you treat him right, and he is going to give you whatever he, he can within his power. And look at this. This is almost slapping me in the face he's agreeing with me so hard. Um, I 
like him. I like him. He's he's he has positive vibes. I mean, you know, there's so much prejudice against Irish in his time and you know, he never had a lot, but what he had, he was grateful for every day. And he's just he's just a happy guy. You know, even though he's de it doesn't bother him, him that he's dead because he knows that he's still alive in in his way. And um he's happy to make other people happy. He was always that way. I like him. I I like this guy. He's a jokester too. I have a feeling he'll go up and he'll whisper something in your ear. And you'll hear him. And you'll know it's him because he's got that Irish brogue. So when you hear that Irish brogue, you'll know it's him. I have a feeling he, he'll he he'll whisper. He'll whisper. He'll just like come up behind you and maybe he'll go like boo or something like that. Just to let you know that he's there. Not to scare you. Let, him know, let you know that he's there. He's with you or, or you know, just to pranky or something but he would never ever do a malicious prank never it's not that's not in him he he that's not his personality but you know just to give your arm like a little jostle or something like that like if you're writing if you're writing he'll probably come up and go Poof. just i mean not not something important but just Poof, you know tap you and the pen will you know kind of jump i mean just stuff like that just to let you know hey i'm right here yeah yeah. I hear him laughing. I know he, I, I'm on to him. I know exactly what his tricks are. Yeah, but he's not mean spirited. Mm -hmm. And he does he does make, like to make people happy. He likes he he enjoys himself when somebody else is enjoying themselves. He wasn't a ladies man, but he is the life of the party. He he is. Alright, is there anything else that you want me to say? Anything, is there anything you want to say? Is there anything I did not cover? Okay, we're all done? We're good? Alright. Okay, oh, I do want to ask you one thing though, Malachi. So, you like the ladies, but what if, what if a male witch would like to to purchase your 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 doll and have you there. Are you okay with that? Lads night out. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said. Lads night out. He said we'll go tear up the town. <laughs> You're something else. You're too much. He's he doesn't have a problem if it's a he he'd love he'd love to be He'd love to help out a lady, but he says, hey, wherever I'm needed, I'll go. And he says, if it happens that it's a man, then it happens that it's a man. He was like, we'll be, he said, we'll be best chums. Very easygoing guy. Nice, positive vibes. I like him. So that is uh, Malachi. If you're interested in Malachi, obviously he's going to be up on the witchery first. I don't think I'm going to have to transfer him to eBay um, for not being sold. I think Malachi is, Malachi is going to go like that. Um, so yeah, that's Malachi and um, the link to him is down below in the description box. Obviously if the link isn't working anymore, he's already sold because I take him down as soon as he's sold. Um, if he is on the witchery, again. Any item that I put up on the witchery, um, if you're interested in, but you can't, you don't have like all of the money right now, you want to reserve them, I can do partial payment. You just have to email me at salemwillow.com. So that is it for Malachi and myself, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.